In 2002, I got a call from a friend of mine who I'd worked with before, Andrew Cortez. Uh, he was just starting up the Forza One team, uh, and I was racing uh, professionally that year. And I'd had a few bad crashes, and I just got this call out of the blue. Uh, I'd worked on networking before in the Windows team, and he asked me if I'd come and help consult on the racing and do the networking in Forza version one. This game really brought me back to Microsoft because it gave me an opportunity to help work on a game and make sure that it was accurate and a good tool not just for you know playing a game and having fun but also for becoming a better driver. Um, we have some very enthusiastic people on the team. Um, David Guyrock, our physics developer, is very enthusiastic about making the physics system run perfectly. And I was able to give him feedback on you know, what systems are working, what systems aren't, um, what things need to be added in order to make the car handle properly and what's you know, what parts of the physics engine are important for racing and what parts aren't as important. So he was able to focus on the most important parts. There are lots of things that separate Forza. Uh, to me, the important one is the physics engine. When I play a racing game, any racing game, um, that, that's not PC-based but console-based, uh, I'm not learning anything about driving. I'm not becoming a better driver. Uh, to me, they're just like flying a camera around uh, a nice track because um, the physics just aren't real. Uh, you know, you're like 200 miles an hour around a corner, but you couldn't do 80. Uh, the grip model isn't right, the car handling isn't right. It looks fast, it feels good, but it's just not real. If you, you, know, if you, if you drove, drove like that out on the street, you would wreck your car every time. And th there's been people who've done that. Um, if you drive like you drive in Forza, uh, legal won't like you saying me saying this, but if you drive like you drive in Forza, uh, you'll be driving correctly and your car will pretty much handle the way that Forza you know, shows you your car handles. Part of racing that doesn't translate well to a flat screen is the fact that you need to be able to look 180 degrees uh, into corners. You know, a lot of people think racing in terms of NASCAR. It's like in NASCAR you just put your foot down, you lift a little to turn left. Um, in road racing it's all about the corners, uh, setting up your exits, coming in at the right speed, getting your marks correct. And in order to do that, you really need to be able to see into those corners. Uh, this three-screen setup here helps you do that. You can look 180 degrees into a corner just like you could in a car. In fact, some, in some cases, it's actually better because you don't have the car around you. Um, so you can get a really good you know, sight, sight line, set up your corner correctly, make corrections, and just nail it. These three are LCDs. Um, LCDs probably aren't the perfect setup. Um, your view your view is only you know, for the guy sitting here. If people are watching you, they get darker as you get off axis. I'd, I'd recommend using plasmas if you've got the budget. Um, we have uh, one LCD rear view. Um, that way when you're racing with a bunch of people, you can see where they are uh, coming up behind you. Uh, you get a 180 degree view around you with the three screens. So you're pretty much in the same situation you would be in in a real car. This seat actually is produced by a Canadian company called VRX and it's, it's the best racing seat I've ever had for a video game. Uh, there's a butt kicker which is a, a vibration generator mounted underneath the seat so uh, you know, we kind of worked with them uh, in, in the game so that vibrations from the road you can feel in your butt uh, so you know when the back end of the car is kind of sliding a little bit and you can make corrections and adjustments uh, based on that. We also in Forza 2 versus 1 we have a force feedback steering wheel which we did a lot of work with to make sure that it gives you the correct information so real drivers will know you know when the front end is slipping the steering will get light um, you can also feel the vibration from the uh, road and the rumble strips in your hands uh, so you, you really get more information about what the cars are doing uh, part, of, part of going fast is understanding how to slide your car evenly through corners and typically in video games you don't have enough feedback to know when that's happening so you're just kind of guessing and if you go over you lose control and you can't recover with a force feedback wheel and feeling the vibration you can get the car at the edge balance it properly and get through the corners fast we've done a ton of upgrades on the sound system the car sound so real uh, we had it out at uh, Sebring Raceway uh, and we actually sponsor a race car uh, which is the Reese team in the we sponsor the Reese team in the American Le Mans series 
and they've been winning everything. Um, but we had our three screens set up out there, and they were practicing the track in their car, which we have in the game. Um, you know, while no one else could get on track, and a lot of the other competitors were saying, "Hey, that's not fair. You can play on one screen. It's uh, still an excellent experience." We use a wider field of view so you can see better into the car. It's obviously not as good as having a full three screen setup, but you can certainly be competitive regardless. Okay, we have a, bu a bunch of fictional tracks, and we have a bunch of very, very famous uh, raceways. In Japan, we have Tsukuba. In uh, England, we have Silverstone. And we have uh, a, a lot of these circuits can be configured multiple ways. Uh, and they're real configurations for the real circuits. So, Silverstone, I believe we have three configurations. Uh, New York is a fictional track. Uh, Sebring, again, is an another very famous track. It's uh, where the uh, 12 hours races run every year in the spring, and it's kind of the beginning of the endurance race season. Suzuka, another famous track. It's a Formula One track, um, and this is one of the tracks um, that I learned to race on by playing Ferrari 355 Challenge, uh, which again is a three screen setup, um, which is basically something that helped me learn to race. Uh, Mazda Laguna Seca. Um, I've raced here a ton. I probably have over 1,200 laps of this track. Uh, so I was able to give them feedback on like the exact corner exits, the camber of the track. Um, so even besides doing our very detailed layouts um, and surveying of the track, um, you know, I can tell when it feels right here. And I was able to give them that information. Okay, this is definitely my favorite vehicle in the game. This is the, the car when I, when I was, you know, 12 years old, this is the car I had the poster of uh, in my bedroom. This car was built in 1984 and it's competitive with some of the fastest cars around right now. It's the 1984 Ferrari GTO. With any form of racing, um, in order to get fast you need lots of seat time um, and you need to be consistent. Uh, that's the most important thing. You've got to, you know, you got to put in your time, you got to get your marks right, break at the same point, get your turn right, get your laps consistent, and uh, work on your time. Okay, now we're going to race.